Welcome in to Drew Silly Diamond for Saturday, July 27th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome as we got some afternoon action and some night action to get into for the weekend. Hopefully winners. Heading to Camden Yards, first game up, 4.05 Eastern start time. It's the Padres visiting the Orioles. Dean Kremer going for the O's. Michael King for the Padres. Total of nine, minus 115. That is the Orioles as the slight home favorite. Padres come in 55-50 on the season. They have been a great road team. Seven games over 500, winning five straight coming into the series, whereas the Orioles, they lost three of four. They've also lost the last two of the last three Kremer starts. Uh, they are still, what, 20 games over 500, and uh, their starter, Dean Kremer, 28-year-old out of UNLV, the former running rebel. He hasn't been all that great of recent. Eight walks, 12 runs given up in his last three starts, and he's going less than five innings per. Kind of question marks there with the O's starter. And he's up against King here, the 29-year-old out of Boston College, 3-2 ERA for the season. And he's been hot, just one earned run, his last four starts. San Diego Padres, guys. The righty-lefty dichotomy in the positive here. Top five lineup versus righties. They're facing one here. They're bottom half of MLB versus lefties. Something to keep in mind we've talked about on the show. But they get a righty here. Plus 100 price tag. I think the dog is barking in Camden Yards. We're on the Padres. First game up Saturday. Heading to the Sunshine State, up next, St. Petersburg, Florida. We get the Cincinnati Reds and the Tampa Bay Rays. Zach Littell going for the Rays. Andrew Abbott, the lefty, going for the big red machine. Seven in the hook being the total, minus 115. That is the Rays as the home favorite. Rays come in just over 500. They did just trade Randy Arena out of the lineup. So something to watch there going forward with their offensive production. Uh, their starter, Littell, he's been up and down, 4-5 ERA on the season. He did give up five earned his last time out against the Yankees. He also gave up seven against the Rangers three starts ago. So talk about up and down. He's been exactly that. And Andrew Abbott, uh, the second rounder out of Virginia, the former Wahoo, last time out six and two-thirds blanking the Washington Nationals. He's got, what, a 3-1 ERA. He's a guy we like to be betting on. Fastball, changeup. Southpaw. Uh, they got a slight bullpen edge here. Hey, I think Cincinnati takes this one, guys. A little wrong team favored. Big red machine, plus 100. Risk 100 to win 100. Second game up over the Rays. We are on the Reds. On to the night action up next. South side in the Windy City. Seattle Mariners, Chicago White Sox. Eric Fetty going for the Sox. Brian Wu going for the M's. Minus 145. That's Seattle as the road favorite. Seven in the hook being the total. Wind factor here, of course, being in Chicago, looks like double-digit mile-an-hour winds blowing in from center field. And two good pitchers on the hill. And both of these offenses, we actually talked about it on the Friday show, they have really struggled. I mean, first off, Seattle, I'm not interested in laying a price tag no matter who they're playing, even though it is the White Sox. I mean, what, 50 games under 500 right now? They came into the series losing 11 straight, talking about Chicago here. 14 of their last 15. They've won one game the last three weeks. I still don't want to lay a price with the Mariners. They are just, what, a couple games over 500, losing three straight coming into the series, eight of nine. Now, Wu on the hill, he's been good, 2-5 ERA. He has been hit around a little bit more of recent, 13 hits his last eight innings. That's a little alarming. I don't necessarily think the White Sox can, can take too big of advantage of it, but it's something to note. And he's up against Fetty for the White Sox. I mean, actually, the White Sox with with what just under 30 wins and we're about to be in the month of August. I mean, it's been an awful season for them. But some of their starters ha have pitched pretty decent. And Fetty's being one of them. 31 year old, another UNLV hurler going on Saturday, sub three ERA on the season. And his last three starts, he's gone 17 innings, only three earned runs given up. So he's pitching some of his base best baseball of the season. Now, something I'd look, like to look at at this point in the season is how these lineups are performing since the All-Star break because, what, they get like five, six days off, and now they've had two series in their pockets onto the third. Sure enough, both of these two teams are bottom three lineups in Major League Baseball, uh, 28th for Seattle, 
dead last for for the Chicago White Sox, dead last overall as well, and against righties. Uh, the Mariners haven't been good against righties either, guys. I think uh, I think this is a pitcher's duel again on the south side. The wind helping out as well. I don't think we get to eight runs. We get seven in the hook right now in the overnight market. We're going under Chicago White Sox, Seattle Mariners, quickly played game. A lot of strikeouts, not many hits, under seven in the hook. Next one up, we are heading to Fenway for the New York Yankees, Boston Red Sox. Number two versus number three teams in the AL East. Marcus Stroman going for the Bronx Bombers. Cutter Crawford, the righty, going for the Red Sox. Nine in the hook being the total. Competitively priced game, minus 110 at most shops right now. That's the Yankees is the slightest of road favorites. Yankees 60 and 44. They came into the series losing four of their last five. Boston hasn't been playing that great of baseball either, losing five of their last six. But seven games over 500. And Crawford, he's been pretty good. 3-3 ERA for the Red Sox hurler. Um, he actually faced the Yankees on June 16th. Actually, it was Stroman versus versus Crawford. So the same pitching matchup, what, about a month and a half ago. He went six innings, three earned runs, nine to one strikeout to walk to walk ratio. That was Crawford, a good start against the uh, the Yankees lineup for the 28-year-old out of Florida Gulf Coast. But Stroman, the first rounder out of Duke, he didn't have that great of a game. Five innings, seven hits, four earned runs, and just a one to three strikeout to walk ratio. So on the wrong side of a one strikeout, three walk performance. I know the Yankees lineup has been good against righties, good overall, but so is Boston's top five lineup out of the break. I think we get the better starting pitcher and the lineup that's seen it pretty well. Both of them are, but I'd rather have Crawford in our pockets, guys. And we get Boston at home, risk 100 to win 100 is a slight home dog. I think they're barking here. Let's take the Red Sox over the Yankees. Got one game left, guys. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree in any games. You're looking to bet on the Saturday or Sunday slate. This is the last show for the weekend Saturday. We're taking a break on Sunday, but we'll be back on Monday right here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. So if you can help me out, smash the like button. Let me know if you're liking the Saturday show as well. If we should keep it going, where you're watching from, all is welcome. It helps out the algorithm. All right, last game up, 7-10 Eastern Saturday night. Chicago Cubs, Kansas City Royals. We get Seth Lugo on the hill for the Royals. Minus 113 to as high as minus 120 price tag on the Royals. Shota Imanaga, the 30-year-old Japanese pitcher on the hill for the Cubbies. Total of eight. And again, Royals minus 113 to minus 120. Chicago Cubs, what, six games under 500. Kansas City Royals, nine games over 500. They're also been great at home, 35 and 20. Man, they have home road splits, so something to watch there. Bet on them at home. Look to fade them in the, on the road. They're at home here. We're going to use that to our advantage. Lugo, 2-3 ERA, nine innings, just three hits, one earned. Last time out, it was against the White Sox, but the Cubs lineup hasn't been that great. And actually, Lugo, his last 21 home innings, that's 63 outs, only one earned run given up in nine hits with 24 strikeouts. So for whatever reason, he is pitching hot at home. We're going to ride that here. I know going up against Imanaga is tough. He's got 108 strikeouts to just 17 walks on the season, sub three ERA. Uh, it's just, I, 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 I want to follow the home road splits, guys, and Lugo's been hot as well. So I, I wouldn't give up too big of a starting pitching edge here. And we also get the better lineup, Cubs. Talk about bottom three teams out of the All-Star break. This is the other one. They've been ice cold. So I don't think they're able to do enough offensively. Hey, we'll jump on the Royals just laying 13 cents here at home to finish it off on Saturday night. So in recap, we're on the Royals. We are on the Boston Red Sox uh, minus 101 over the Yankees. We are on the Chicago White Sox, Seattle Mariners under seven and a hook. We're on the big red machine, Cincinnati Reds, Andrew Abbott as the starter. Plus 100, the slight dog there. And the San Diego Padres also plus 100 over the Baltimore Orioles. Smash that like button, comment below, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll talk on Monday. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets.